Software estimation can be really hard, but did you know that understanding the Kinefin model simplifies it a lot? In an earlier video, we explored the Kinefin model in detail, particularly its complex and complicated domain. Now let's dive deeper into how these domains impact software estimation. Providing clarity, we'll explore the known unknowns and the unknown unknowns and cause and effect relations. We look at how estimation foundationally works and you'll learn just why estimation is so hard when we bring these concepts together and then all of a sudden you will see how this understanding actually simplifies this whole estimation business. Welcome to Frankly Developing. I'm your host Frank and let's start with a quick recap of the Kinefin framework. You can check out my other video for the full details. So let's just focus on the two problem domains, complicated and complex, and on the unknowns. When we estimate, there will always be aspects that we don't know about. These are the unknowns. What is more interesting though is that there are two kinds, known unknowns and unknown unknowns that just so happen to match the Kinefin domains of complicated and complex. Let's make this more concrete. Say you have to estimate a project to migrate an old desktop application into the cloud, but you have never seen the application or its code before. So it's clearly an unknown aspect, but you know about it. This is a known unknown. On the other hand, while you're doing this migration, you may come to learn that this particular company has no prior cloud experience, no understanding of SLOs, availabilities, scaling, etc. You did not know that when you did your estimate. Maybe you even talked about it and thought you share a common understanding. But then it turned out not to be the case. That's just one example of an unknown unknown. And just like with the Kinefin model, the boundaries aren't always that clear. Is it a known unknown or an unknown unknown? When, for example, your coworker gets hospitalized and is gone for weeks. What about something like COVID? Let's bring it back to the Kinefin problem domains. When something is complicated, it basically means you can use expert judgment and experience to handle and plan for the known unknowns. In a complex domain, however, you will encounter a lot of unknown unknowns. Imagine working on a new product idea there's no market fit yet, just a vision. This will clearly be a complex domain and you'll encounter a lot of challenges that you just couldn't have known before. Other tasks, particularly smaller and more focused ones, like writing unit tests for a function or a method, have much less of a potential for these unknown unknowns and may be considered to be in the complicated domain or maybe even in the simple or clear domain. And the next important thing about the Kinefin framework are cause and effect relations. In a complicated problem domain, it is really hard to know these, but you can learn them, experience them, and most importantly, they are repeatable. If you build a wall from bricks, and you don't build it straight up, but instead at an angle, you'll quickly learn that this is the cause, and the effect is your wall crushing down, and it'll happen again on the next wall. If you become expert enough at this, you may be able to determine the precise angle for your wall height to just keep it short of breaking down. Contrary to that, the complex problem domain is defined by not having repeatable cause-effect relations. They can be explained in hindsight then. For example, you can easily explain the effect of your project being delayed because there's a clear cause with most of the team being sick from COVID. But that isn't a repeatable relation. On your next project, unlike the wall, you cannot use your COVID experience because now people may just be vaccinated. This huge difference between complex and complicated is why experts thrive in a complicated domain. But all your previous experience and learnings cannot be relied upon in a complex domain. Let's now take a closer look at estimation. How does estimation work in general? If you don't throw dice, then you forecast from past experiences. 
Last time you drove to a supermarket, it took 10 minutes. So you estimate it to be the same tomorrow. It's not always going to be correct, of course, as there may be smaller or larger delays on the road. If you drive towards a job interview, however, you want to be on time. And so your estimation effort goes up. You think about the known unknowns, like potentially higher traffic, and add a time buffer based on your experience with traffic in the past. Should you, however, encounter an unknown unknown, your interview is unlikely to suffer from it. Yes, you will be late if you have to stop because of an accident and maybe even have to provide first aid. And you certainly won't have planned for that to happen. But as you could not have known that, any decent employer will be perfectly fine with you being late for that reason. So what does this all come down to? The very foundation of our estimations are past experiences. We have seen cause and effect play out and we assume it to play out in a similar way in the future. Thinking back on Kenefin, we got a match here. This is the reasoning for a complicated domain. We rely on the repeatability of the cause-effect chains for making our estimations. Now what if the challenge you face is complex, not complicated? It means we have no more repeatability and thus past experiences are not useful for estimating anymore. In fact, complex problems lack the very foundation we need to make estimations. That's why bringing all of this together, it is of immense importance to have a clear understanding of whether the challenge you are estimating is complicated or complex. There are people like Dave Farley who argue that software development is inherently a complex challenge. I consider it a bit more nuanced and if you're interested in that, I have a video of it as well. But as I promised, we want to get back to simple. Let's just say, for the sake of simplicity, we ignore those nuances and consider software development generally to be complex. Then there is one simple solution to estimations. You do not estimate. If development is complex, then estimation is simply impossible. Yes, there are always people disagreeing to this, and they will tell you of the many times they estimated reasonably well. Again, assuming we're working in the complex domain, then this is simply called luck. But a fair objection is my previous remark that the situation may in fact be more nuanced. Some aspects of software development may be complex and others complicated, opening up the possibility of making some meaningful estimation. I'm interested to hear your point of view. Let me know in the comments below. Personally, while I recognize the existence of these nuances, I actually prefer sticking to the black and white view of Dave Farley and just assume it all to be complex. From my experience, that's reasonably close to reality to be a useful simplification. But of course, it implies the not-so-simple consequence of doing no estimates. Let me know in the comments if you'd like to hear more about this. Thank you for watching and have fun developing.